Ex situ conservation is a form of conservation which takes place out of the plant's natural habitat. Seed banking typically deals with plants whose seeds can be stored for a long period of time. And this is an easier method because you can maintain hundreds of seeds per population in a small space. Living collections are another form of ex situ conservation. These plants are maintained horticulturally by botanic gardens or arboretum. Living collections usually contain plants whose seeds cannot be frozen for long periods of time. Living collections represent the overall plant biodiversity. To some extent this is good, but it's excluding some of the genetic diversity that can be found in wild that is essential to conserving a species. Quercus oglothropensis is a species I worked with this summer. It is native to the southeast United States and is considered an exceptional species. This means its seeds cannot be stored for long periods of time, so it has to be maintained as a living specimen. One of the main issues with this plant is it's a white oak. These trees grow very big and will be hard to manage all in one location. The problem with Quercus oglothropensis is that it's not managed for genetic diversity. So that's where my project comes in place, is we are trying to look at the population differentiation in the wild and compare it to those found in living collections at botanic gardens and arboretums. With the data collected, I was able to construct a phylogenetic tree. This tree shows a comparison between all eight subpopulations that we sampled from. All the Georgia populations are labeled in green. We can see that two of the populations are somewhat related. And then we have one population that is distantly related to the two subpopulations that we see some sort of relation to. This suggests that seed sampling should be done across the whole species range to ensure that all the possible genetic diversity is captured. Populations that are not measured for genetic diversity have a higher chance of becoming inbred because there is no measure of how much genetic diversity are found within these captive populations. Inbreeding depression reduces the fitness of the plant and can be detrimental to the plant's health. Over various generations, this population has become inbred, thus leading to inbreeding depression. Over time, the corn has become smaller and weaker, which ultimately reduces the fitness of the plant. This is a potential threat to many captive populations that are not managed for genetic diversity.